So I'm out at a site and I was just going to do the layout for this train package unit. Uh, you can clearly see it's a gas package unit with AC. Um, yeah, I'm just going to kind of go over where all the components are, what they are, uh, stuff like that. Um, just for anyone who's newer or wondering where stuff's at. Um, you can kind of get the model and serial number right here on your data tag. You can get all the other information like refrigerant, how much pounds, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not going to read it off, but you can kind of see here the model and serial number if you need it. Um, Next, uh, I already got all the panels off just to make things quicker and easier. Um, this, this right here is the kind of the filter compartment. So if you're doing your filters, it takes two 20 by 35 by two inch filters um, is what's going on in there. Um, you have your economizer and outside air motor right here. It's a train. Uh, sometimes you get the Bulimo motors too. Honestly, that thing looks very similar to a Bulimo. Um, and then right here is your economizer control. This is just like the older kind of style train. Um, some of the new ones are getting the Bulimos in it. They're all digital and everything. Uh, obviously you have your actual economizer and outside air that when that turns, it will either suck in more outside air and block off return. So if you're economizing, you're basically just bringing in 100% outside air or very you know varying amounts of outside air um, you got your filters just slide in and out of this track you can kind of see behind there is your coil uh, here's the back side of it here this is that new uh, well new ish aluminum all aluminum coil the trains doing um, so that is your coil uh, next you have two separate compartments to so this upper one is your blower compartment the lower one is uh, your heating compartment um, if this thing was a heat pump or something like that sometimes you like strip heat down here and all that but this one like I said it's a gas package unit so um, up in this compartment we got your ECM uh, blower motor your wheel everything like that if you ever had to change out this it actually comes out by just taking some of these screws out and then everything just kind of comes out um, you have taps so your ones in the front are speed taps if you want to adjust speed um, which you should definitely not do unless you're qualified or know what you're doing uh, and then the other plug is kind of like your main power and everything like that the little mullocks plug there uh, your your speed taps even stay state right here on this data tag um, up here we got one of your high limit switches that can trip and cut out your heat if something isn't working correctly. Um, and then over there we have a mixed air sensor up there as well. Um, right here we have our TXV for air conditioning. So that's just our metering device uh, in our refrigerant circuit there to meter the refrigerant. Um, Let's see, uh, this little guy right here is actually a sensor for a different, so th everything I showed you over here is like the OEM um, economizer control stuff, which is really basic and can be a little outdated. Uh, this one on it has uh, updated economizer control. It's like an aftermarket one that you can like watch and look at as you're like off-site and stuff like that digitally. You can just pull it up on your phone or computer and kind of check everything, check the percentage of the economizer, or adjust the percentage of the economizer, all that kind of stuff. See when it was economizing. So it's just a lot more elaborate and in-depth. Um, down here in our burner compartment, we got our inducer motor. The, this inducer motor does have a little capacitor here. Um, they, they all kind of come as a set there, but if you are testing stuff, you could test that capacitor separate. Uh, you got a pressure switch, pressure switch or hockey puck, whatever you want to call. Um, I've heard people call it a few different things, but it's basically just your pressure pressure switch. Um, and then we got a flame. It's a resettable high limit. It's kind of a flame rollout ish. It's actually usually they're down lower where the flame is actually going to hit it, but. Uh, this one is a manual resettable, so like if it does trip, you manually can reset it by clicking the button in. Um, and then we have our spark ignition right here, 
and then our flame sensor right up here um, and then let's see we got right here is just pressure tubing going from our pressure switch down to the inducer motor right right here uh, we have our gas valve right here you can clearly see the high and the low on it so that means it's a two-stage gas valve they do have a little toggle switch on and off, so it is on. Uh, and then it has ways you can adjust your low pressure and your high pressure um, for when you do your, your fire off and testing. Um, oh yeah, it looks like we got way hidden down, down in there. We got another limit switch right down there. I can see with the purple wires going to it. That one does not look, does not look resettable. Um, so it's just a auto reset once it cools down. Um, obviously you got your in-shot burners right there. Um, your little, uh, man, or yeah, basically that's everything kind of there for the most part. Um, and then, uh, going in, into it here, we got our, our shut off valve here. And then this is a high pressure system as far as the gas. So. Uh, this has a pressure regulator right at the thing to bring the pressure down to something that this thing can actually handle um, and then That just kind of sums up These compartments and then the next we got over here. We got our kind of controls compartment and then compressor So up here we got our RTRM control board. It's kind of like the main motherboard for this guy uh, we have a couple um, relays here and then right here is that pearl um our pearl economizer control um and also you can do like a wireless thermostat with it and stuff like that there's a lot of different things you can do with it i've done a couple of videos on on these that you can kind of look up if you'd like uh on the the pearl economizer controller um uh, right here is a test pin so if you jumper these out you can kind of cycle through um everything and then also you have basically if you're wiring in like smoke alarms or any kind of safeties or aftermarket safety stuff you can um, take out these little bars and then when it trips it will basically kill power to it so it's kind of a slick little way to to do all that um, and then you can see right here is just kind of a block that has a bunch of common to it uh, over on the other side of this little guy which is usually behind this little door um, you got your ignition control board um, We got our This is a three-phase system as you can see we got Three lines of power coming in there um, That's our compressor contactor and then right here is a phase monitor I actually really like this product that they put in all these trains uh, When I have power off to it right now, but when it's energized there this little sight glass right here uh, will be red or green so red is a phase error. I mean, it could be that your your phase isn't set right from the get-go, like say you're just firing this thing off for the first time, or um, it could be like you lost a leg, like maybe you have a bad fuse at a disconnect or a breaker panel or anything like that. Um, so this thing is pretty slick, and then it's obviously when it's in the green, you're good. Um, uh, right here, we just got a transformer, pretty standard. Uh, you can see you can set it for 208 or 230. Uh, typically not always when it's three phase a lot of times for 2a always check it obviously um, but you switch this from the 230 down to the 208 and uh, it kind of helps get your low voltage to the right the right voltage um, and then you have a little reset this can trip it's resettable if you ever have like a little short or anything like that so you don't just burn up this transformer um, this one I actually had to look at because to be honest, I've always seen them in here. I've just never really paid attention to what it's gone to. I knew it was a sensor of some sort, but I didn't really know what. So what this one does is it's actually your crankcase to your compressor. It's like a sensor. So the crankcase heater, which is right here, this is kind of heats up the oil and everything in the compressor. So everything's just kind of ready to go. So if this ever does fire off when it's cold, you're not going to um, shorten the life of your compressor. Um, so heat pumps you see them all the time sometimes with the ac you don't see it as often especially with something like this because you have the economizer on those cold days to bring in outside air um but yeah basically that crankcase 
little safety is set up or not safety but temperature sensor is set up so that if it gets cold enough it'll close and make the circuit complete so that it will heat up the crankcase and then when it's warm or yeah when it's warmer it's will not send power down here so that way you're not just wasting power for no reason so um like i said it's something i've always seen in these and never really paid attention but i figured i better double check what it went to um and then we got looks like a, a filter dryer right here so now we're down in this refrigerant refrigeration kind of compartment uh we got an outdoor sensor so this little sensor right here will read uh outdoor temperature um we have our pressure safeties in here uh a temperature um right here and then uh basically your compressor which is kind of right in front of us so that's pretty obvious so um most of these safeties and little deals are kind of common on everything uh you kind of get some of the lower model stuff you might not get it um, just because that's where you're saving some of the money but um, that's kind of everything there and then we have our condensing coil out here as you can see it's also that aluminum uh, coil as well the train had switched to a lot i think a lot of people kind of in the industry have switched to those now um, but yeah that's everything there and then up on top we have move this panel as you can see on this panel though too you kind of get a comp layout of everything a lot of times these got faded and all messed up though so they don't really last that long um, and then just kind of your wiring schematic and everything there um, but yeah we have our condensing uh, fan motor and blade uh, here uh, we have our disconnect right here. Like I said, I have it off right now. Um, and that's just kill power to the unit. Uh, over here we have our heat exchanger compartment, which is really convenient when you're out here in maintenance. You can just pull this little panel off. It's four screws and you can get in here and really inspect to make sure if there's a cracks or anything like that. It's kind of nice when you're, when you're doing maintenance. Just a lot more access to do it. And then also when you're replacing a heat exchanger, it makes it a lot easier to have maybe another guy over here to kind of help guide it in the right spot um, or to make sure you have it set in the right spot. Uh, another thing that I like to do is when I do the fire off on these, just so you're not pumping all that, all the oils on these heat exchangers, um, when it goes to burn off, um, I can put the panel in there and then everything's blowing on the roof and you're not stinking out the, the space down below. Um, especially if you have a lot of places that have some of these commercial buildings are really tied into the alarm systems and fire systems and all that and it's always a pain dealing with all that um, right here you got your condensate drain for your air conditioning uh, with this p-trap and everything the p-trap doesn't come with it you always have to add those um, as well as uh, another thing you kind of add is just anchoring making sure you're anchoring these to the curb as well um, and then I'm assuming that's a code everywhere for this anchoring deal I know it is up here in the Pacific Northwest um, and then here you can kind of see your your gears for the other side of um, the economizer and everything I'm um, swinging around here to this side a lot of these economizers as well are um, you just have to order them separately as well so um, but yeah, so here I took out, there was a outside air, or metal mesh filter basically for outside air filter. Uh, just when you are economizing, you're sucking in that outside air, you're not, you know, having access for birds or anything to fly inside of your unit. Um, and kind of stopping some of that cotton wood and just different stuff like that. Um, let's see, usually you'd have an outsource, well this is an outside air sensor right here for that pelican economizer but a lot of times with that train oem one you'll have an outside air sensor um, secured right here as well and then this lower part is a barometric relief um, this metal screen is still in there but all this really is is if there's too much building pressure it'll kind of open up a little bit and let a little bit of that air out so you're not having all this crazy uh, positive pressure inside the building um, 
that's about everything I can think of on this. Uh, another thing to always check when you're doing these, and this is pretty much goes with residential and commercial, but uh, when you're putting these gas flex lines, if you ever use one, make sure you're using the right, it's approved for the BTUs that you have in your unit. I've seen multiple occasions where it was maybe a pre-existing one or just wrongly installed from the get-go, but it's way too small, can't handle the BTUs, and it just sounds like you're a whistle going off, basically, because it's just trying to push all that gas through too small of an opening with these, so it's just something to look out for. Um, that's about everything I can think of. A uh, little bit longer video, but just kind of want to go everything I'm on uh, just the layout of all the stuff. I know when I was newer, there's a lot of these things that were uh, new to me, and I feel like they're always kind of changing or updating stuff too on these units. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much everything I can think of. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, feel free to add anything that you can think that I didn't mention um, or anything like that. But that's about everything I can kind of think of by just kind of going through all of this. So uh, thanks again for watching.